Hello, uh, today is the 25th of uh, June 2023, and we'll talk about uh, two architects, uh, Harry Seidler, whose uh, centenary is today. He would have been 100 years old if he lived until 2023. And Alvaro Siza, who is 90 years old, also today, the 25th of, uh, of June uh, 2023. Let's uh, read a little bit about Harry Seidler, uh, was an Austrian-born Australian architect who is considered to be one of the leading exponents of modernism's methodology in Australia and the first architect to fully express the principles of the Bauhaus in Australia. Uh, Australia, as we know, has uh, very important uh, modern architects, but uh, Seidler, who relocated from Austria to, to Australia uh, was one of the first uh, modernist architects of this uh, country, which has very important architects. If you are so kind to turn off the microphone, unless you want to say something, uh, thank you. So Seidler designed more than 180 buildings and he received much recognition for his contribution to the architecture of Australia. Seidler consistently won architectural awards every decade throughout the, his Australian career of almost 50 years across the varied categories. His residential work from the 1950s, his commercial work from the 1964, and his public commissions from the 1970s. He was a controversial figure throughout his long career as he regularly publicly criticized planning authorities and the planning system in Sydney. And maybe we can get inspired by, uh, by him because I think architects have to fight for what they believe in and they shouldn't allow bureaucracy if possible to, to dwarf them. Uh, sorry about this picture, it's not very, um, uh, you know, uh, big uh, resolution, but you see Gropius on the left and Seidler on the right together. Uh, here he was, uh, um, uh, Harry Seidler, uh, here he is again. So, born in Austria, but being active and very, very... Um, you know, uh, busy at building in Australia. We begin with this uh, house, uh, Rose Seidler house. He built several houses for his own family, for members of his own family. I think she was his sister. 1948-1950, Rose Seidler house. Um, and here it is. So from 1948-1950, so more than 70 years ago, here we have an example of a vigorous, convincing moder modernism. If this house was built today, we would have say, we would have said, uh, yes, let's go for it. It's it's a good house for our time, but it was built 70 years ago. So you know, architecture, like other arts, is capable sometimes to transcend time. The Rose Seidler House built by Harry Seidler in Australia, 1914-1950. Austria exported important architects, if I can say so. There was uh, Schindler, there was the Neutra. Uh, here we look at the work of Harry Seidler, but Schindler and um, Neutra emigrated to the United States while Harry Seidler to Australia. He came from a well-to-do family and uh, that's why he was able to build the beginning for his own family or members of his own family. Uh, this is the plan of the house. This is a, a, a modernism which is um, uh, which was not haunted by the problems we have. So there was a sense of confidence 
that animated uh, the architecture of those years, not just in Australia, not just the architecture of Harry Seidler. Usually the architecture of mid-century, mid-20th century, and not just architecture, but also design um, has um, uh, freshness, which is inviolable even from, from today and uh, which can be inspiring uh, even for today. We see also the presence of art, you know, uh, uh, chromatically rich, uh, uh, which animates that patio, um, if I if we have to call it so, on the uh, superior level, and also the presence of stone. So there is the modernistic box, but there is also the presence of organicity, the organic material, stone. So I think, uh, you know, surprisingly perhaps, you know, after so many years of modernism, this kind of, uh, you know, total confidence in its uh, values is not so often uh, present today, I think. Times did change, of course. So the Rosa Seidler house by Harry Seidler. Now another house built for a member of his family, the Julian Rose House, 1949-1954, the proximity of Sydney. This one also, I think, is, a, is an example of an architecture that is, uh, uh, you know, um, quite uh, convincing in its, uh, its modernism. You can imagine at that time, no, 1949, it, 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 it would have been, uh, and it was probably much more, uh, you know, uh, surprising, so to speak. Look at the car and look at the house. The house has a modernism which the car doesn't have. The idea to move the stair so uh, sculpturally uh, and so obviously outside of the perimeter of the house per se, I think, I think it's a good idea because the, the stairs do, uh, do bring an element of sculpturalness and uh, plastic uh, uh, vigor, which uh, most buildings do need. Steel structure, Harry Seidler. He built also in Vienna. So if you arrive in Vienna, you can find a, a very tall building uh, built by him there. And then I think it is uh, shown in this presentation. Another house for Marcus Seidler, again, a Seidler, 1951-1953. Here again, we see uh, elements of what we already saw, uh, the presence of, uh, you know, artwork, part of architecture. And this is also something we don't do so often these days, but I don't know why.
<clears throat> there seem to, seems to be a, a certain difference between the ground floor and the, and the floor above. As you can see, is the prism of the floor above that sits on a on a uh, on a base which is more uh, free. And uh, it's an idea, you know, to to uh, create this uh, differentiation between the second floor and the first floor, the or the uh, first floor and the ground floor. It depends how you how you call them. Now the blue blues point tower. In Sydney, 1958-1961, Harry Seidler, and the tower it is. I personally am uh, seduced by this uh, early modernism, if we are to call it so, but I think we can, you know, mid-century modernism, uh, honesty in, in the expression of its functions, uh, simplicity, which is real, is not mimicked, and uh, I think it's a, it's a it's a tower which um, stands the the test of time. You see the opera of Sydney by John Hudson on the on the lower right corner, and the tower by Harry Seidler, with a bridge between them. Sydney. The rendering of the time, as simple and unassuming as, as the building itself. I mean, you know, the building is assuming because of its height, but otherwise its expression is, uh, architectural expression is rather uh, reticent. And I think this is a quality. Australia Square Tower, 1961-1967, also in Sydney. This one is different. Harry Seidler again. More than 60 years ago, it was built. Uh, another apartment building called Aquarius in Sydney, 1963-1965, but I don't have pictures. Then Harry and Penelope Seidler, that's their own house in Kilara, Sydney, 1966-1967. Sitting by Charles Eames, about whom we talked the other day. A chimney with, uh, you know, the fireplace with with the uh, with the stonework. And this uh, interplay between concrete and and, and stonework, I think, uh, uh, is a pos positive thing. Two forms of rigidity. Two forms of uh, solidity. But while uh, concrete was an is a conglomerate, as Frank Lloyd Wright called it, the stone is not a conglomerate, of course. Art, sculpture around the house. Again, the uh, love story between architecture and, uh, and pl the plastic arts uh, continues and should continue in our time as well. Although we sometimes forget that they are sister arts, architecture and painting and sculpture. Maybe this was his wife. 
very sightless wife. Condominium apartments, Acapulco, Mexico, 1969-1970. I spent a few days in Acapulco once, and I have to say, um, Mexico is not what um, Donald Trump thought. It's a country, a very proud country. Yes, it has problem, but so, problems, but so does the United States, and so does every other country on this earth. But I met very proud people and speaking English perfectly and dancing diabolically. <laughs> yes, I do have to say that I never saw and I never even imagined human beings dancing as they danced. Once I went to a, um, you know, a disco, to a club, and I, 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 I received a lesson of unbelievable vivacity. They were like, like fires, like snakes, like... Then I decided to never dance. Not that I danced a lot before, but now for that you have to allow them to to be themselves. They are incredible, and not just a, a pair I saw like this. Many. The music is in their veins, in their blood. Anyway, this is the apartment building in Acapulco. Very sidler. Of course, it's for the well-to-do and for the tourists. But anyway, Edmund Barton Building, formerly trade group offices in Canberra, Australia, 1970-1974. A large, uh, you know, uh, kind of headquarters building business. It's, it's like a fortress of money making, a capitalist fortress. It's huge. As you can see, he was a skillful architect, no doubt. Um, maybe his architectural language is not too surprising, but uh, he didn't make too many mistakes. This kind of architecture at that time was also practiced in, in the United States. The Embassy of Australia in Paris, France, 1973-1977. It can only be in Paris, of course, with that, the silhouette of Tour Eiffel in between the two parts of the building. But the building is uh, interesting itself. Uh, the building of the French Embassy, of the, the Australian Embassy in, in France. Great uh, concrete work, uh, plastical engaging, sculptural. Uh, Eddie Seidler, Paris, 1970s, the Embassy of Australia. Okay, that was it. Uh, he built other buildings, <clears throat> but this was a small. Um, uh, commemoration uh, now on the day of his centennial. Let's wish him happy birthday and let's uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about it if you want. <laughs> 